Um, Good morning. Have you kind of seen the your team respond from the loss on Sunday over these last couple of days? Have you seen energy or intensity pick up, or what's the mindset been like day to day these last couple of days? Well, we were off on uh, we were off on Monday, uh, so a lot of players did uh, rehab, recovery, uh, a lot of extra shots, and uh, focused academically on Monday. Yesterday, we had a uh, long, focused uh, film session, and um, I thought a very spirited workout with regard to uh, the challenges that we're going to face at Northwestern. Uh, it, I think you always look for those things, like, well, how are we going to respond? And to be honest with you, it, it could be a bit overdone. It, it's It's... The idea of the value of uh, Tuesday. And did we get the most out of Tuesday that we could? Not, uh, are we still recovering from Sunday? Are we, are we still thinking about last week's Purdue game? So um, I thought for two days before the game, uh, it was um, focused, which it needs to be. Now it has to be better. It has to be better today because, uh, you know, as much as people can say, well, uh, play harder or play tougher or play, you know what it really is? Play better. And so we have to be better today at both ends of the floor than we were yesterday. Hey, Phil, obviously you guys have had a, a lot of close losses this season. Uh, Sunday at Penn State wasn't one of them. I guess just what was the most uh, disappointing part of that outing for you guys? Well, the result, uh, the, the, and this is across the board. This isn't pointing at players, uh, no individual player, not even collective players, but all of us. Uh, we knew going in that the key number was three point shots. <clears throat> um, and in Ann Arbor, we held them to nine and we win. They're a team that averages more than 11. And that spurt at the end of the first half. And um, uh, kind of the tsunami effect. Uh, that's the disappointment. Obviously the result. Uh, but knowing that the plan is, is in place. And really inability across the board. Not just players. Uh, to make sure that we're following it exactly because our margin for error is, is not great. So uh, that would be the biggest disappointment. Obviously you just mentioned that the margin of error, I guess there's a lot of talk about having a sense of urgency, playing with a sense of urgency. I guess when you have a team with plenty of young guys who maybe haven't been in this position before, I guess, what do you do as a coaching staff to instill that and to make that come to fruition? It has to be about the today, like worrying about what bracketologists say or, or, the, the impact of another game, like what did the Iowa win over Northwestern mean to us? Really, it didn't mean anything other than, uh, you know, they're going to have a little bit more of a chip on their shoulder playing at home on Thursday. I um, think they, the, the, the urgency has to be there because you get 120, if you're lucky, you get 120 opportunities like this and you have to make, use of every single opportunity and that includes the practices building up so it's all about this day and not what could happen in two weeks what happened over the last two weeks over the last two games um and the age of the team doesn't doesn't really uh doesn't really factor in it's about the entity that is this year's team Hey, Phil. So I think uh, when Western plays tomorrow, it'll be their fifth game in 11 days because of some of their uh, COVID setbacks and, and whatnot. I just wonder how much of tomorrow is making sure you guys are still just play, playing the way you guys like to play, but also knowing that if you saw any of last night as well, they, they may have some tired legs and trying to get out and run or just use their lack of rest against them, I suppose. Uh, it's an interesting thought. Uh... And it has been mentioned that 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 here's been their response. They had a COVID pause, which is unusual this year. 
And here's how they responded. They came out and they beat Wisconsin. Uh, they run away from uh, Nebraska and Minnesota. And in a heavy compete last night, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody watched it and uh, in our program. And it was a, a heavy compete. The fact that they're playing on an uptick, uh, Bowie in particular, uh, Byron, and uh, the kid off the bench, Bornheiser, um, the only factor in is really like if you if we're thinking of Roper in the game plan, he had a really nice game against us uh, in Ann Arbor. Um, and if he didn't play last night, does that mean he can't play today or, or Thursday? Uh, that that's the only thing. But we're not going to change the way we play. I mean, we have to acknowledge we have to play quicker. We have, I think it's now eight fast break points in our last four games. And for us, not not for them, not to attack them, but for us, we have to get um, more in transition, more up and down play. What what do you think it is that's been preventing you guys from doing that lately? Uh, well, all year long, it, our individual defense and our team defense, uh, we're not a team that creates a lot of turnovers. Uh, and one of the things that we've noticed is we're a little bit like we're a beat off, maybe like that long off in outletting the ball after a rebound. Um, so I, I would say it starts there. We have to clean up the defensive boards and then we have to really work on outletting the ball and everybody wants to be part of the offense. So we want to get everybody running with the ball, but it starts with rebounding. Coach, this is going to be um, another road test for you guys. Um, would you say that with this young team that you guys have responded to road environments better as the year has gone along? That's a good question. Uh, I, I, the only answer, honest answer I can give you is I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really processed it uh, all the way out. Um, obviously, it's different, and it's been addressed that it's different and that you have to become tighter, not more afraid uh, on the road. And I guess the proof is in the pudding. I mean, we did not answer to the environment on, on Sunday. Uh, game before that was at, at Maryland. Um, on the road, play for the silence and don't play to the noise. And I can't say that we've played to the noise. We haven't played nervous. Just haven't played well enough uh, uh, on the road. And, and I like your description. This is the opportunity. It's, it's the next opportunity um to to and that's what separates you really like if you want to be a good team win on the road right you want to be a postseason team win on the road you want to move up and in, in, into the buy area in the big 10 win on the road and that's that that is uh that's our intention in preparing to win on the road Hi, Phil. So Northwestern has those two special guards and Bubu and Chase Adij. I guess just what are some challenges they pose offensively and then defensively, especially for uh, Chase? Defensively, it's it's extraordinary what what he's able to do. Top five in the country in steals. Uh, he he's involved in every uh, like attacking style. Just really impressed with their style of switching one through four how they handle the ball screens, how they double the post. Um, and he does it without, without banging his chest. Uh, I heard the guy last night, uh, and I apologize because I don't know who, who was doing the broadcast, but talk, talking about him as a, you know, one of the better, if not best, two-way players in the league. Uh, the, the number one thing at the other end of the floor is their fearlessness. And I mean this respectfully. Boo Booey and Chase Audige will take any shot at any time. If they can see the rim, they're going to take a shot. Not selfish. And, and now you have to address that. You know, people are going to some analytic people are going to come back and say, well, yeah, but Boo Booey's shooting 
step off them and, and don't let them get a blow by. And you're like, yeah. And you know what? Uh, go back and watch a really big game against Wisconsin last week. And he makes a big three when they're down four. Um, you, you have to guard the whole half court with both of these guys. And they are relentless, relentless, relentless in putting pressure on you with the dribble. Great size for the guard spot. And um, I think the number one thing, Noah, I would go back to is they're fearless. So kind of building off that Northwestern is, you know, they, they forced turnovers, uh, forced 18 last time you guys matched up. Doug and Kobe combined for eight. So I guess just how do you talk to Doug and Kobe, get them kind of prepared for, uh, for what they're going to face on Thursday? Uh, film, film, film. And then in practice, you have to take our scout team, uh, our, our get ready team, and you have to change their mindset. They are no longer just guarding as they would guard Kobe or Doug. You want to dive passing lanes. You want to switch aggressively. If you foul, you foul. Uh, and I'm not saying that Northwestern fouls. I said, but for our guys, uh, Cooper Smith and, and uh, Yo-Yo works with that team. Uh, Ian, when he's healthy, you, you have to go for their ball. And um, you know, the, the numbers that jump out from the last game are the 18 turnovers, which led to 14 points for them. And also they had 16 fast break points against two for us. So we have to get that balance. We, ha we have to be, have a coordinated effort between not just the passer, but the receiver, because Northwestern has built their game on turning over and steals. Because sometimes turnovers, you say, okay, well, that turnover was caused because the press and you threw it out of bed. No, no, no. This team is is actively and aggressively seeking to steal your ball. Bill, you mentioned like Yo-Yo there. How have you seen players like him embrace their role on scout? And have you seen them kind of adjust week to week with these different scouts that they've had to that they've had to execute? I I will say this that it my four years in this program, uh, when I walk away and somebody says, what were the, what were the eight, 10 most memorable things that happened to you? Uh, up near the top is going to be the scout team's uh, ability to kind of morph into our opponent. And uh, this is my scout. So Northwestern runs a lot of stuff. They, they, they do different things on the post. They trap big, big, they trap big, big on the bounce. They, 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 they do things on the side ball screen that they don't do on the middle ball screen. And to be able to get the scout team for a half an hour yesterday and then, and then to watch them and then to uh, know that, that today we'll add a little bit and even tomorrow during a walkthrough or shoot around, we'll, we'll do the same. It's going to be at the top of my list. The, the, the IQ and the competitive instinct of these scout team players over my four years has blown me away. Anybody have anything else? Okay, coach, I guess that's gonna do it. Have a great practice and we'll see Thank you later this afternoon. Thank you, I appreciate everybody. Be safe.